uh, as you know, that's the second lecture of um, of the course. The title of this lecture is Characteristics, Attitudes and Environment for Effective Problem and Solving. Okay, give me a second just to put something here, the clock. Yeah, where to go. So as Dr. Laber said, my name is Andrana Ziris, and this I'm giving this lecture for Atlantic International University. Yeah. Let's, okay. Yeah. So uh, as uh, from the previous lecture, as you know, I'm getting this information from this book here. Uh, the book is Strategies for Creative Problem Solving from um, uh, Mr. Fogler, LeBlanc, and Rizzo. Just to be safe on the copyright. So the lecture uh, breakdown, as we always start. Uh, today, we're going to go first with the part of having a vision. Then we're going to follow with the working together in teams. We're going to follow with the responding to criticism. And in the end, we're gonna go through the conflict resolution, which there we have six steps. The first step, it's about describe your interest and what do you want. The second step is to describe your feelings. The third step is the exchange underlying reasons for your opinions and positions relative to the problem at hand. The fourth step, understand the other person's perspective. Fifth step, generate options for mutual gain. And the sixth step, to reach a wise agreement. Okay, okay before I start, I have to say that um, not like the other uh, lectures I gave here for the university, the questions will be in the end. And um there you can you are free to go you don't have any questions for the rest of you i will have two set of questions and which will take probably 10 minutes each okay so let's get start with that yeah having a vision so to make a difference you must have a vision in the world so we can see two pioneers of that. We can see on the left Martin Luther King with the I have a dream and John Lennon on the right with the magic. I'm pretty sure you know both of them and their contribution to uh, the human race. Unfortunately, yeah, on their end. Let's continue with that. So what is a vision of is the ability to see the way things must be or will be in the future. So kind of foreseeing if you want. So if we want to make a difference, we must look around us for what is missing. But where to look? We can look in our organization, I mean, where we work, our community, and also in our lives. So our vision can formulate from listening, reading, talking, and focusing in order to improve our current living conditions. So the vision must be. So any vision okay, without a plan is just a wish. So by having a master plan for your vision makes it easier to implement. So by setting day-to-day -day decisions, by targeting our actions to achieve our desired outcomes. So now to develop a vision, sometimes we need to step back, to take a step back and look the big picture because sometimes, or most of the times we get um, worried too much and we tend to over-focusing or overthinking something. So, Take a step back and look at the big pictures, the big picture. But that, okay, that's what I said. By being caught up on details from time to time, we tend to forget our initial target. Therefore, occasionally, we must stop, reaffirm our work, 
but it's still aligned to our vision, to our dream, and then continue. So what is a pattern? It's a model or a pattern, if you want better, which is based on a set of rules, which defines boundaries and specifies how to be successful in between those boundaries. So success is measured in terms of the problems we solved using the above rules. So what is a paradigm shift? shift? Either occur instantly, these paradigm shifts, or evolve over time. So the transitions, or if you want shifts, just not to, to be aligned, let's say, with the paradigm shift, move us to see the world from one way to a totally different one. Okay, people in the old days are thinking that the world is flat. And yes, with some experiment, with, uh, with some periplus over the earth, we found out with some, also with our technology today, we can understand what is, uh, how the, the world, our earth and other planets are formed. So in a paradigm shift, the new, a new model is based on a new set of rules, that's what I said, okay? With some information we have, replaces the old model. That's how, how we proceed. So the new rules establish the new boundaries, which allowing the problem solution previously seen and solved. So practitioners for, of all pattern must start from the starting line, which the old rules do not apply. So do you think of any pattern shifts? Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, I would like to have one to one, two minutes. Don't worry, it's not a set of questions. I just want to hear uh, any pattern shifts of what do you think, okay, of a real world? I, I am asking you people, okay? Just, you can, you can, if you, if you are, if you think, uh, if you don't want to speak, okay, you can also write it down as always, okay? Write your answers here, yes. Thank you, Dr. Robert. Or on the text, you can write your answers, okay? So don't worry, we're gonna go through some, some, uh, paradigms as well, some examples after that. So don't worry if you think that it might be wrong. Nothing will be wrong. I, I, will, I will show you also some examples. So please tell me, what do you think of an paradigm shift that happens that happen in our world? Okay. Any, any answers here? I'm waiting for you. Anyone? Democracy, good. General project, I can see, please show the slide before this. Okay. The slide was this one. Okay. That was the slide before. Uh, hello, Diane. Okay. okay, liquid to solid water. No, no, something that. Uh, change our idea of something like the earth was always like a sphere okay but uh with some knowledge with magellan uh, columbus and other people who understood we figure out that it's uh it's a sphere or our uh our nowadays technology okay change of course of study okay you can say that working remotely or flexible working shift in organizations. That's good, that's good. I like this one. Good, good. Okay. Environment challenges, true. Because before we didn't know about the environmental challenges and now we won't. A big change is serving of attention. Use the solar system instead of in world politics. Okay, yes. When you change a mindset like this, okay, that's also a good one. Personal 
change. You can say that we're gonna see that actually later on. I think maybe on the by the middle of the uh, the slides. Okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go further. Okay. Then I had some good answers here. Really good. Thank you, people. Okay. Any problems? Yes, I have heard some good answers. Let's see the ones I have here. First example, ability to buy products or services online. The traditional travel agencies, they were forced to adapt and offer expanded services to compete with the online services. But the online services cannot be beaten. So the online services examples are booking or kayak. So you can go through online services, you can make it in two, three minutes, and that's it. You you book your flight, you booked your, uh, uh, your apartment that you want to go for holidays, but by go, uh, without spending too much money. But if you go through these travel agencies by the office, you have to pay the people there uh, that are standing there, the, the research that have to go through that. So as you can understand, the only online services here win because you can spend less money and they can take also more money. Yes, some things sometimes we have to adapt to reality. Don't worry, we wouldn't have more examples. So other different examples, more easy to understand. There are the DVD, VS, the VHS types. Okay, okay, we had a DVD. Before the DVD, we have the VHS tapes for the older ones. Okay. I remember that when I was a kid. Okay, now we have even more. We can have it uh, through clouds. Uh, we can have it uh, even on USB or, yeah. Also online music sales, instead of in-store sales, once upon a time, we had to go to the store to take uh, our music, but now we can find everything online. Also digital photography, then the film photography that you had to wait for days in order to get the photo, the photos, and some of some of sometimes, or in my case, most of the times, uh, I had some really bad uh, photos. But now we have the digital photography with your phone. Instantly, you can see the photo you can took, and okay, if it's uh, it's a bad photo, you can retake one instantly. Also, the dial-up modems via the cable and DH, DSL. Okay, this problem it's still old. Okay, we don't use any more dial-up modems, or it's too old again. So the thing is that technology advances very fast, and the problem shift can happen many times in the same industry, as you can see here with the cable and the dial-up modems. Technology, we have also here an example. First, we had the floppy disk. Then those floppy disks were replaced by the CD-ROMs. Those CD-ROMs were replaced by the USB drives. And lastly, we have now the cloud. So you can see in the same, in the same paradigm shift for the same, uh, for the same topic, which is technology, you can see the storage okay, goes from the floppy disk to the cloud. In my case, uh, back in 2003, we are using the floppy disks. I think it was by the end. And now, 20 years after, we have the cloud. So what is now a padding paralysis? So it's a situation in which someone, individual or maybe an organization become frozen. That means that this organization or the individual hopeless is locked, if you can use this word, in the idea that was successful in the past and will be also successful in the future. Okay, that is not always happening. We're gonna see some examples of that. So what is a paradigm pioneer? It's a stage after the paradigm shift, but it's not clear, okay? So that the new paradigm will be successful. So before we go to the paralysis, let's go to the pioneer. Okay. So, there are these pioneers here. They are not pioneers in location, but pioneers in time. So they choose a time to make the change. 
not the location. We can be everywhere, anywhere with that. So these pioneers here, they escape the paradigm analysis by breaking existing rules with no success of guarantee. So these people thought of something to create something new, to go a different path, to break the rules, to with, with no one, because no one did it before, that's why the pioneers, they thought, okay, I will do that. They didn't think, okay, if I do that, I might fail. They go through it and they are realized that, as we can always realize that there are no easy roads. Okay, that's why the pioneers. So they had to cut new pathways. So with doing that, and okay, and if they have also their luck with their sites, they're making their route safe and they make it easy for the others to follow. So the characteristic after what, after what we have said of a pioneer are the intuition to recognize a big idea. The courage also to move forward in the face of a great risk, because as we have said, we don't have a guarantee of that will be successful. And the perseverance to bring the idea to fruition. So what's a product pioneer? Yeah, we still on that. So a product pioneer not only generates alternative solutions to a problem, but looks for ways to improve the things even when no apparent problem exists. So continually searching for opportunities to initiate a paradigm shift to improve their process, or then maybe it's gonna be the product, or maybe they found some problems on the organization and they're trying to fix it or optimize it if you want better. So the important is not only to create a vision, but also to re-evaluate periodically your vision, okay, not vision, your vision, modify your vision when it's necessary and rework your implementation plan to accomplish it. So the paradigm shift first example, this first example had a wrong judgment. So this uh, example will take us, as you can understand, to Switzerland. We're gonna talk about Swiss watch or watches. So as you know, or maybe not, Switzerland has a long history of making fine watches. So back in 1968, they were owned the 80% of world market in watch sales. So today they hold less than 10% of this market. Their downfall, it was the emergence of the quartz digital watch. So the Swiss failed to adopt that new technology, the quartz digital watch. Why? That actually was an example of paradigm analysis. Why? They, they thought that the technology that they had since it was successful in the past will continue to be successful in the future. So inventors did not protect that digital world, okay, with a patent because also the Swiss, it was Swiss invention, these quads. So they didn't care. They said, okay, we have all these uh, this watches, these watches before all, they are successful. Okay, that's another invention as well. We don't need to have a patent. So therefore, the Seiko and Texas Instruments, we can also tell them TI, got the opportunity of that situation there, and they capitalize the idea and market it. So they said, why not? Since they didn't do it, they didn't care. So as a result of that such a poor calculation, the company of the Swiss watches, the number of jobs in watch industry in Switzerland dropped from 65,000 to 50,000, 15,000 in a bit more than three years. Imagine what happened there by a misjudgment. So even in case that the Swiss started manufacture digital watch after its success, they had to follow the paradigm shift and 
be on the same footing as Seiko and TI. So even after, uh, even if they thought to shift to also create these watches after some time, after they saw that it was successful, they will be on the same side with Seiko and TI and spread the, the winnings, okay? So they will be still, still losing money, but at least they will have some, uh, some earnings, some more earnings there. So yes, since we have seen the uh, a wrong judgment, let's see also a correct judgment here with the second example of paradigm shift. Here, we're gonna talk about, a food, about the food industry here. The title is Equalted Arches. I think you are pretty familiar with this footage. So we have here the Ray Kroc. That guy was a restaurant supplier back in 1954. So this guy was getting a large order from a small restaurant, which was run by Dick and McDonald. I think now you can understand on what I'm talking about. So it was a unique in concept, that restaurant, and very successful with a limited menu. So this menu had like burger, hamburgers, fries, and yeah, some more, but it was very limited because, I'm sorry, at that time, the menus were really big. They had all the restaurants there. Uh, it's like a fancy restaurant now. All the restaurants were, were, were kind of like that, okay? So this idea, of a limited menu, just gave him a snap. So instead of variety, McDonald's was concentrated in quality of a few items. So Croc realized the potential of this business strategy as a paradigm shift than other restaurants. So in 1960, he bought all the rights from the McDonald's as he recognized the value of that idea. So he pursued to the creation of a McDonald's change. Chain, sorry. So this was a true paradigm shift for the industry, which was having a limited menu. As we have said at that time, all of, all of restaurants had a big menu. They had a attention to quality because they had limited menu. They had also attention to the service, also they had attention to the cleanliness, and also they had value in chain of restaurant. So Croc, as a parallel pioneer, okay, we haven't talked about that, but you can understand, you can figure out that this guy was a really parallel pioneer. This guy here illustrated three key characteristics. The first one, was intuition. Intuition, why? Because he saw an opportunity and realized the potential. He had the courage, the courage to push the idea of a new type of fast food restaurant because, okay, I don't want to repeat myself, but it was something brand new. And perseverance because he was able to persevere and bring the idea to fruition. As a um, natural pioneer, they had some other people follow. So after Croc, there are some later other pioneers which followed his footsteps in this new type of fast food restaurant. For example, we have the Burger King, we have Wendy's, we have Taco Bell, and many, many, many more. Okay, let's move to the working together in teams. So the problems become more complex. As they become more complex, we have the solution to require a group of people of different expertise because, okay, it's more problem, an individual can't fix it, but let's say, a, a project, okay? It might need some groups of people in order to 
work on it. Yeah. I remember in uh, when I was back in my day, when I was in university, we had uh, uh, we had a micro mouse that it was a robot that had to go in the middle of the the labyrinth and as fast as possible. So we're like a group of five people. One had to create the code. Other one had to create. Uh, the circuits and later on. Okay, I'm not gonna go through that, but you can understand why wouldn't some group of people sometimes. So back in 1990s, we had an increase of teams in industry solving problems. Now, another decade here. In 2000s, companies shifted to open offices and removing walls. So this on 2000 created a dynamic interactive environment. So this shift from individual problem solving to group-based process comes as a response to the global competition, which needs to respond fast to changes in market and technology. You can understand why global competition, if you are hesitate or if you, you don't work well and fast, Someone else might take the may, might take the the project, might steal your idea, might have the pattern faster, and more and more. The result of this um, uh, group, okay, creating groups, uh, the universities were giving students more ex students more experience in working in teams in order to be ready for the industry. So the team members are learning and practicing collective decision making and collaboration. So the team members now they gain appreciation of conflict and differences of opinion, they learn to balance the time demands of the team, including their own commitment, and learn to appreciate the mutual support importance. So essential tools now for a team problem solving the meetings. So the meetings now must be carefully planned and skillfully run to realize their maximum benefit. So since everyone's time is valuable, meeting must be effective and efficient. So they must be on the target and not uh, making uh, just talking around and uh, take up our eyes from the problem. Okay. Don't be distracted if you want better in better English. So importance of meetings and positive group interactions cannot be overemphasized. So all group members must learn to work smoothly together. So the well function uh, of problem solving progress. So that's what it is. So in case now of disagreements in a team, of course, we are different people, <clears throat> different characters, of course, we're gonna have this. So now in case of disagreement in a team, if that occur, you have to realize that we have to criticize the idea and not the person. So focus on correcting the mistakes, which prevent them from reappear and move on. So we have to give positive reinforcement and encouragement to your team members. Success of the project depends on how people communicate and interact with each other. So another key ingredient of successful teams is the ability to work together creatively. So this guy, another person, John Scully. This guy was a former chairman of Apple. So uh, Mr. Scully, talked about the philosophy of maintaining a creative environment for product development. So this guy said, get people rich beyond themselves doing extraordinary things. So some ideas he proposed for team leaders for a creative environment are, first off, tell your team where to go, not how to go there. So roughly, that means roughly aim in the direction. 
So creativity, creativity, I'm sorry, happens more easily when teams think for themselves than follow another directions. So the freedom feeling, this thing help them find their own solution than worrying, failing specific instructions all the time. Second one is safely raise the challenge which the workplace should be safe. So, so workers must not be afraid to take risks and make mistakes, but standards must set high. Don't forget about that. So now getting more involved in group problem solving, personal traits surface on group individuals. So other positive and other barrier to problem solving. So now let's check some solution on those problems that might arise barrier the problem solving process. So how to handle the top, the 10 top problems in group? So problem one, flutter it. If you want better, strangle. So the strategy to minimize the problem here is to make sure the mission is clear and everyone understands what is needed to move forward. I think there is a line here on the right. I don't know what happened. It's not from my computer. Okay, sorry for that. There's a green line. Yeah, yeah, someone is, it's me? No, someone is paying, someone is writing on the, Dr. Robert, if you can see it. Ah, perfect, thank you. So let's see one problem here, overbearing experts. So we have some strategies to minimize the problem. So the first one, an agreement among team, lead, team members. So we have the right for all members to explore and question all areas. Second one, be cautious. If you want better, be nice to everyone, no matter how they're behaving. Third problem here, dominating participants. That's what I don't like. So the strategies to minimize the problem is List the balance of participation as a goal and evaluate this issue regularly. Also, practice gatekeeping to limit and dominate participants. Another problem here is reluctant, a reluctant participant or not willing participants, you know, to tell their opinion. I don't know the reason, maybe they're afraid, maybe they think they say they will say something wrong, who knows. And studies to minimize the problem here is to encourage everyone to participate. That's what I'm doing on my lectures as well. So ask opinions of quiet members and encourage them by validation. Okay, I did some, uh, yeah, uh, I talked about it before. So yes, encourage the people that are quiet. Maybe they have a correct solution, but they think too much. Maybe they are wrong or they have, maybe they have some self-esteem problems. I don't know, just hear the people. Hear all the people there. Maybe you're gonna get some solution faster and easier. Something you never asked before. And also require individual assignment and report to see that, okay, not really, it's not a laziness. Okay. So you never know what reluctant means. So rush to accomplishment. Okay, so just to minimize the problem again, confront those doing the rushing and remind them not to compromise while they were speaking. That's really good, actually. Also strive to reach a balance of forward progress and decision quality by making sure that all vital information is known and then making the best decision possible at the time. I was still here. Yes, we have a third one here. Is there information not being considered that should be considered? Maybe we're rushing and you haven't seen that information there, but you might not consider it. That's why you're rushing, or maybe not. If so, better take time, get the important details before moving forward without knowledge that could change decisions. So, Another problem here, the unquestioned acceptance of opinion. Yeah, I don't like that. 
So minimize the problem. Play the service advocate. Ask for supporting data for reasoning. Don't accept everything and question. Ask why. Why to do that? Why not? I mean, maybe, maybe there are some other issues behind that. Maybe yeah, he didn't think about it. Maybe he forgot. He uh, he didn't read well a contract. Okay, something like that. Who knows? Accept and encourage conflicting ideas. Okay, maybe someone else has a different idea that is conflicting with that. Maybe he's more right, or the other idea will, will be more efficient. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, we're gonna have the questions in the end, okay? Sorry. So the third one, be careful with criticism. Criticize ideas, not individuals. Yeah, we have also here the attribution, designation of motive to others. Okay, minimizing the problem again. Ask for data to support the statements. Okay. Verify that the attribution is correct for a statement as John is just saying this because he's angry and has an issue with sales department. So maybe uh, that person is biased, okay, or, or something. Maybe he has his person for the job, or maybe he was angry, as we have said there, with John with the state department and he said some he had some about nothing um yeah they had some issues and they don't want to uh, cooperate with the department you never know okay so ask for the data there and verify that that is true so another one we have here the discount or ignoring a group members statement to minimize the problem here as well. So we have to listen effectively, and that's a must, okay? We have to provide training in effective listening. We have also to support the discount person. So don't discount any group member here. Also, talk of line with persons which continually discount opinions, contribution of other team members. So, Take these people that discount other others' opinion and talk to them. Talk to them that every member had the right to talk and give them their ideas. You never know what the other idea uh, how can how can help. And if it doesn't help, come on, still good manners. Don't discount anyone's opinion. So another one. Wonder last the digression of end targets. So just deviating from your target. And how to minimize this problem? You have to follow an agenda that includes time estimates, of course, because if you have some time to look at and uh, you can understand that at that time we have to complete this task and then you cannot deviate too much of the project. Okay. You have the tasks, you have the time assigned on that, and that's, that's a good way in order to avoid that. Also, you have to, you can keep the topics in full view of the team and direct the conversation back to the topic. So, some, if now I'm talking about uh, this uh, slide or the previous slide that I, I started saying a story about when I was in university, okay, you have to have a direction and um, you have to view the team and try to get back to back on track, back to the presentation in my case, and not deviate too much with my memories. That's a good idea. Sure. So another one, failing team members. So that's something that many teams have. How to minimize it? Focus on ideas. That would have happened before. Focus and attack, not attack, that's a bad word and try to talk about the change the ideas. So focus on ideas, not personalities, don't attack uh, on persons. Also, you can get other adversaries to discuss the issues online or agree to a standard behavior during meetings. So take these two people that are fighting 
and take them online, offline and talk to them and tell them, okay, that's a group project. We need to behave in a certain way. Don't, don't do not, in order to not take too much time in order to complete it and agree at least at that time to be, to behave. Okay. That's a good one. So now responding to criticism. So respond to criticism in the workplace is not a skill that all employees have, of course. Different, different excuses come and go about why a job is not done or done late or wrongly. So can you think of a common excuses you use in everyday life? Okay, now don't worry, uh, I need your excuse as well. Uh, don't worry, again, it's gonna take one, two minutes uh, and it's not gonna take much. Okay, just just write a sentence down. Just write a sentence down, and I'm okay. Okay. People, I'm asking for your everyday excuse, your favorite, if you want. Please go and upload the presentation. I will I will upload it. Okay, don't worry. Just now, write your common excuse when you are both asking for a project. You can write it down, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not feeling too fine. Okay. Don't worry, you can write it down. Yes, thank you, Dr. Lavert. Please write it down, don't worry. I don't have to speak. Did not complete the goal because I had so much to do. Unclear objectives, I'm running late. Good, good, I don't allow I said to have you know, any excuses. That's good. That's good, Dominic. Okay. Not in the mood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too tired to do it. Everybody was already. I'm not able to do it. Ah, I'm not able to do it. Okay. That's we're gonna discuss this one today. I'm sorry, I expect it wrong. Okay, I had a headache. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. That's good, people. Thank you. As I promised, it took just a minute. So let's see. A recent study shows here below the top 10 most excuses in the workplace. Yeah. First one, I forgot. Yeah, that's my fault. So, second one, no one told me to go ahead. Third one, I didn't think it was that important. Fourth one, I waited until the boss came back to ask him. Fifth one, I didn't know you were in a hurry. That's the most irritating. Sixth one, that's the way we have always done it. That's one actually I hear it a lot from my students. So seven, that's not my department. Eight, how was I to know that this was different? Nine, I'm waiting for an okay, but you can see it a lot in the industry. And the tenth, that's his job, not mine. Yeah. Okay. So let's proceed with that. Do you recognize any of those? Yeah. There we go. So avoiding all the, of those excuses in reality, possible. Working to recognize though, when using them, will help you be more efficient worker and of course team member. So high achieving workers use criticism to learn and improve their performance. But as we understand, low performance workers are making excuses. So the methods of beating excuses in the workplace now. We have three here, what we can do. First one, take the initiative to ask the boss than waiting for the reminder. That actually was one of the excuses there. Second one, challenging the way the things are always done. So you can be kind of pioneer on this one. And also take time to investigate details because they say that the devil is on the details. So adapt following procedure in situation where a mistake has been made. So acknowledge you made a mistake and state what you have learned from your mistake. Second, state the action you will take to ensure you will not make that mistake again. 
And third one, be specific as possible. I made the mistake in running the contract through it. Okay, so you can understand where the mistake was and not to not repeat it. So as we know, there is no guaranteed way to respond to criticism, saving you in every situation, of course. But as we know, mistakes have consequences. So the conclusion here is that uh, we will better instead of excuses. So what we have to do is to acknowledge our mistakes, learn from them, take specific actions to avoid making the same mistakes in the future. So that's my advice and the book's advice actually. So now we have um, an example of respond to criticism with a wrong judgments here, okay? That's a wrong judgment. The title is Safety Alert, No Brown M&Ms. Yeah, you can understand what I'm talking about now. So the ones for you to rock, we salute you, or let's go with the fun Helen, a rock and roll band. Once upon a time, that's actually a real story, they arrived in Santa Fe for a concert. Those guys here, as soon as they found brown m &Ms in the table, they trashed their dressing room. No, no, they were not excited too much before the concert. You will understand why. Also, they made sure that the stage safe before performed that night. But why all that trouble for just some brown m &Ms? Okay, then, not them, sorry, the real reason, okay, was not the brown MMs, but the fulfillment of contract requirements. The band always requested the brown MMs as a contract reading test, which Santa Fe failed. The group had 850 new lights, their equipment, and had, of course, wouldn't. They had trust issues with set up crews in two places. Two places yeah. Since they didn't trust, would read the contract with necessary safety procedure for the equipment. Therefore, in the middle of their detailed contract, added as a reading test, they put that close down. There will be no brown MMs in the backstage area, or the promoter will lose show at full price. I know stupid clubs, but at least they know what they are doing. Consequently, as they found the m and the brown m and actually, they knew the contract had not been read. So needed to do a civil safety check before performing. So they knew that they didn't read the brown m and so they did, uh, were not sure, of course, that they have seen all the all the conduct or the safety measures. So, of course, they had to check before performing. On which they were right. They found that the stage had not been installed per the conduct. Therefore, it was unsafe. So, as expected, a damage of four hundred seventy thousand dollars happened to the place floor, which band was not responsible. So the stage staff didn't think reading the contract, which was the excuse number three from the 10, remember, but the number three. The excuse number three was saying before, I didn't think it was that important, okay? Also, they used the excuse number 10, they all figured it was someone else's job. And the one that had it on the 10, on the list of the 10, it was, that's his job, not mine. And they installed the stage the way they always did with other stages, which that leads us again to another excuse, then excuse number six from our list, which was saying that's the way we have always done. It. So they um, they forgot this, they used that three excuses. Okay, maybe they didn't use it by verbally, but they thought these three excuses in order not to go with, through the, with the contract. Let's go now with the conflict resolution. 
controversy or human disputes can be a positive contributor to creative process. But when it transferred into interpersonal conflict is a challenge for the team. So that energy distributed in those conflicts could be better spent on achieving team's goal. For example, imagine you are the stage manager from the example of Brown and Dems. You are a place blame each other of whom fault is not rating the conflict properly. Now, following the negotiating steps to resolve a problem arising from a conflict between group members. The step one was describe your interest and what you want. This one is said about tactfully describe your perception of the problem and what you want as a desired outcome. From here, you have to define the conflict as more specific, not generally global, then define your views in as short and as specific a manner as possible. Third one, acknowledge the legitimate goals and of the other person as part of the challenge to be addressed. Focus on a long-term cooperative relationship with statements such as, I think it's in the best interest of the team for us to talk about an argument. Be a good listener, face the other person and be quiet while the individual takes his or her turn. And also show that you understand by paraphrasing what the other person say. Therefore, you could say, it is clear that the contracts are not being read truly. If we do not address this issue, we will make the same mistake again and be liable for more damages. Second step, describe your feelings. So the feeling must be openly expressed for the issue to be resolved. Acknowledging that every person's feelings are valid is essential for furthering the negotiation. So you might say, I'm confused why the contracts are not being read truly. So your employees might say they are frustrated about having to read the same contract over and over, or they may feel surprised and annoyed that one group had a different contract. Step three, exchange underlying reasons for your opinions and position relative to the problem at hand. So it is now appropriate to better understand the underlying reasons both parties have for taking their positions. So for that, you have to present your reasons and listen to the reasons given by the other person. State the underlying reasons for what you want and work to understand the other's party reasons. Only through this empathic, empathetic, I'm sorry, understanding can you are search for creativity have win-win solutions. You could say, as a manager, it is my priority that we run a safe and profitable concert venue and maintaining proper knowledge of our conduct is important to that priority. Step four, understand the other person's perspective. So clarify the intention of your teammate may help you realize that his or her intentions are not the same as you feared. Be sure that you understand both perspectives and openly discuss opposing perceptions. So for that, you have to make eye contact, avoid negative body language, like constantly looking at your watch, okay, I'm bored, I don't like what he's saying, he's always saying the same thing. So practice, practice active listening by using encouraging verbal cues to elicit further information. For example, can you expand on that, on your idea? Or tell me more, I want to know more about your idea or about your opinion. Also, frequently confirm your understanding by restating what you think you have to you have heard others say. So you might not have heard something right, or you are missing something else. Don't don't use conflict about that. Ask a bit more. Also, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Okay, maybe these two I have to put them together. Okay. You could say for that. I see that it will be to have to read the same contract over and over again. 
However, that is not enough of a reason to not have them properly read. So step five, generate options for mutual gain. So use each other's perspective to promote the generation of new creative solutions. Empower the other person by being flexible and providing a choice of options. For that, brainstorm to generate at least three workable alternative agreements before selecting the one solution that you will join the employee. Careful to have more options and at least to have a better way to have a better solution. So allow everyone to participate in this process. You could standardize contracts, read them yourself, or even take turns reading them instead of having one person to do it all the time and you know get bored of reading again and again those contracts. Step six, reach a wise agreement. So you have to think, does everyone have an equal chance of benefiting on that contract or agreement? Does the agreement meet the legitimate needs of everyone in the team, or at least those people who are directly affected by the conflict? Let's say the manager, the floor manager, or the people with the room and the, and the, and the band. Are the gains and the losses of all parties roughly in balance? So as a manager, you will have the opportunity to fix the underlying problem while making sure things run smoothly why a new solution is found and implemented. For example, I will look into standardization of all contracts. So we have to read less for each event. In the meantime, I'm going to assign a specific person who will be held accountable for reading all contracts and knowing every detail. So the next time situation like this come up, we catch the details. Yeah. Maybe the next time will be Yellow men and the mandates or not. So yeah, finally we reach the conclusion. <clears throat> Today we have to talk about having a vision. We saw the working together in teams. Also, we have seen the responding to criticism. And also we have to talk about conflict resolution. Okay. Before I proceed, I think we don't have time with the questions. I will upload them anyway, again, with, um, with the solutions. So at this time, I'm with you for any questions you might have, okay? People, any questions? Now is your time to shine or ask. Okay, everybody, you can raise your hand or write your questions into chat. I see a question in the chat from Dominique Forbes. Mm. Sorry. Yes, uh, I can see from, um, I will go from the left. Uh, Dr. Jane Sogu, yes. Dr. Jane, you raise up your hands. Any questions? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. This is a nice presentation. Thank you. From what you told us in the presentation, environmental problem and the solving. Now I have to talk in respect to where I'm staying, which is Nigeria. Okay. From May this year, 29, we had a problem of removal of square subsidy. From 165 naira per liter to 617 naira per liter, which is 50% increase. Mm -hmm. And you know, going by this, Nigeria as a oil producing country we don't have any effective or working refinery that refines this crude oil now this crude oil goes to foreign countries for refining and it goes through 
by sea or by air, the cargo, which is source of transportation. And now fuel is high. When going out there, you still pay for the refining and pay for the coming back. When checking all this, you will notice and see that all you producing country we are is by mouth saying. Those people that do the refining for us, that are benefiting oil than us here in Nigeria. Now, this is the problem we are having and is seriously threatening since three months ago. Civil servants, even if you have a car, you have to fuel it. I'm sorry, Dr. Jane, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, we're talking questions about this lecture. Okay, please keep it short. Okay, and because uh, we might have time for one or two more questions. So, okay. please keep it in short. All and and all, sir. Okay. In all and all, on this note, how can economic environmental problem come to Nigerian foreign aid to Nigerian is not only when we have civil war or when we have epidemic like uh, COVID-19 that foreign bodies can come to aid because this is not international problem. It's just retreated to Nigeria. So my question is, how can foreign bodies come to our economic aid in respect to this? But how that is related to the course, to the lecture? That is the environmental effective problem solving. No, that's uh, uh, environmental. When we talk about environmental here, we talk about how to, uh, how to, okay, how to solve it, how to solve this one. Uh, that's, I'm not here to provide you a solution for that. This one, you need a pioneer, a pioneer like the people, like Ray Kroc or someone else, or maybe you to find the solution to, uh, to use this lecture, if I may, and go through that to see what you can do with the resources you have or think a new idea of how to mitigate the problem and solve it. Okay, that's my advice on that. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Don't worry, don't worry. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. So another question, please keep it short. Please, Dr. Jen, um, uh, mute your uh, microphone for the others. Uh, Barnabas, I will go with you. Any question? Okay, uh, good afternoon from Nigeria. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Everyone. actually, good afternoon, actually, from Cyprus, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I want to thank uh, the presenter for a well uh, thought of topic that was uh, excellently handled. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, teamwork. If you are in, if you're a member of, uh, if you're in the team and uh, there's a cracking problem to solve, and uh, you happen to provide the best solution on how to go about uh, the solution, uh, the problem solving. And every other member is not agreeing with you. So what uh, do you do at that point? Ask my question. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Barnabas. Actually, the answer is here. On I the don't slides. know if I'm clear. Yes. No, no, you're clear. Actually, the, the here one, it's on the slides. Okay. So you said that everyone is uh, uh, you said that everyone is agreeing with you. That could be maybe no, I dominating say, part. Yeah. No one agrees. No one agrees with you. You are just alone. What you are, you are the, the your, your idea is the best, and no one, every one of them, do not see to seem to agree with you, and uh, you are just all alone. As a okay. member of uh, the problem solving committee uh, team, how do how do you handle the situation? That's the thing here. It's on the 
34 uh, slides and question acceptable or opinion. So you have to try. Uh, okay, no one, oh no, sorry, it's not here. The second or ignoring. Let me, I see, I've, I've seen something here. You can be like floating. Uh, let's see, where is that one? No one agree with no one. Okay, you said that no one agree with you or everyone, not, not, not anyone agrees with anyone you said. Sorry, what was the question? I said, if you are a member of a team and then you have a problem to solve, okay. and everybody comes up with an idea, but you, your idea is superior to every other idea, but nobody, no one, none of your team members seem to agree with you. What but do you how, do? how do you know? How do you know that you are yeah. the expert? <laughs> uh, you, you, it could just say uh, from if uh, I say uh, from your experience, maybe you are the most experienced, or it's a thing uh, you have uh, you have got training on, and the other people you are more knowledgeable than the other people, and they don't seem to agree with you. They want to continue with uh, doing it the way they used to do it. So, what, what do you do at, at that point? Okay, the thing is that you have the team leader for that. The team leader, most of the time, is the one with more experience on this kind of project. So the team leader is the one that um, orchestrating, if you want better, the conversation and the team. So from that, the, I think it's one of the slides, um, if you search it more, um, and you try to hear everyone idea and you put them down. So that's how we, the team leader at this, at this time will take each one and talk to them and see the pros and the cons of each idea and try to find out uh, which idea is the best solution for the specific project in order to have a faster and better solution. So that's what the team leader will do in this kind of this time, this in this situation. I don't know if I answer your question or you still have sub question on that. It's okay. I think uh, it's okay, but uh, I think uh, the team leader is uh, uh, is not in most cases. It's not always uh, the most experienced uh, person. Sometimes somebody in the team could be more experienced than the team leader. But I, I take your answer. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. 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 It's, it's it's tricky. It's tricky to say who, who is right because everyone would think about that. Maybe someone else heard, heard something similar that they had the same solution. Actually, that happened to me sometimes. And other people with more experience that they thought that they were right. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you, Barnabas. Let's go to another question, and we can wrap it up. I can see there, uh, oh no, Bagma, hello. Mr. Obagoma, uh, Owen, Mba, Sam. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Good afternoon. I, I, how do we apply this? Um, I'm sorry, your connection is bad. He can't across client. He can't across client that is very important to you. You know, he's very troublesome, but you, you need his money. I, I'm sorry, you are, inter you are interrupted by internet. Can you please repeat the question? Very short tempered, and he only wants to have his way, but you need him because. Embassy, I'm sorry, you are interrupted. Uh, moment. Sorry, uh, Embassy, you can write it down uh, because your connection is not good, unfortunately. Okay, I will answer uh, maybe a question from uh, from the texts we have here. It's a human when being ignored or being. Okay, object. And what else we have here? 
uh, Priscilla, what will happen after resolving a conflict in your organization? Then observing an individual with keep raising another conflict. You do again the same thing, you're trying to solve as many problems and I find a way to continue with that. What do you do with individual in the question? What will you do to prevent such a saturation from coming in the organization the second time? You never know when the problem will occur. Uh, okay, between different political parties. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna go through political. Uh, and Basam, can you can you please uh, tell me again the question? Maybe the the internet is better now. Can you? No. Okay, I will ask for Dominique Forbes. <laughs> Dominique. Yes, sir. Good morning. Morning. My question, my question solely was what led to the topic due to um, how informative it was. That's my only question. You, I'm sorry, what? The question was what? How did you arrive at the topic and mm -hmm. its content be, be due to um, how informative it is? How it came to the... Uh to create, you mean, this, this lecture, you mean? Yes, sir, this particular one, yes. Actually, if, ah, they, uh, it, it has been given to me huh. uh, from a university to create a course for the huh. students. Huh. And I, I thought it would be a good lecture for everyday life to huh. give back to the people, because I thought, okay, it's good for students just to pass a lecture, but in order to give this information out to the industry, it will be way, way more beneficial than just give it yeah, to the students that are still in university. So that was the idea. That's why I did this one. Thank you. No worries. And uh, one last uh, question from Abdul Lamain Tamara. Good afternoon, Professor. Can you hear me? Uh, a bit distorted, Hello? but yes. Uh, can you hear me, Professor? Yeah, yes, a bit distorted, but I can hear you. Uh, yes. uh, uh, thank you so much for your no worries. inspiring presentation. I'm really interested, you know, in an issue relating to the paradigms with respect to the conflict in Niger. Niger. Mm -hmm. You see, recently there has been a coup d'etat in Niger, and ECOWAS has resolved to intervene there militarily in order to restore constitutional rule. Uh, unlike ECOWAS, the United States and Russia are opposed to military intervention. I would like to know, you see, given that the United States policy, foreign policy, is based on you know the promotion of democracy, has there not been a paradigm shift in the US policy objective. In this case, that's my question. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna talk about political here. Sorry, Abdul, but this actually is not to find solution to the problems here. Here, I'm, I'm here to give you uh, like a manual, if you want better, uh, to see some examples of how to solve the solutions by checking the examples okay you see which one uh, adapts to your problem and from there you try to solve it if you can the solution the, the, the problem okay i'm not here i'm not i'm not having a magic hat and giving solutions i'm uh, trying I'm, to yeah <laughs> i'm really delighted thank you so much Thank you. Your presentation is really promising and it seems to be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, you so much. I hope you put the luck with everything. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Lagert, uh, can we wrap it up here? Yes, we can. Yeah. So, uh, 
Thank you so much, Andreas Nazadis. Wonderful topic. And how, do, do, do the students have a way of contacting you if they have questions for their assignments? I think they can um, and, uh, um, they can send the questions to Antonella and Antonella can send me the, for the questions and I can answer them. Okay. So I guess in that case, I don't have Antonella's email. Uh, let's see what we can do. Um, also glad I think can have it. Okay, Antonella, I think for Antonella probably, Antonella, yeah, let's go. I'm gonna have to say, that send the questions to your tutor and then your tutor will pass them on to the proper channel. I think that's the best way to do it. I'm sorry, okay. Robert, uh, shall I get to what? Yep, I think you're ready to go. Thank you so okay. much for your time, Andreas Nazaris. You. We look forward to having you back to talk about another very interesting and valuable subject. Thank you. Me too. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, Bye. wait. I'm staying here. You can go, Andreas Nazaris. Ah, you can go. Okay. I'm, leaving, I'm, I'm, going, leaving. I'm going to stay to answer questions. Okay, okay, okay. I'm leaving. Bye-bye. All right. So let's go ahead and lower hands.